how are you guys doing? Welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. My name is Rick and today we are looking at GameStarter, a very promising launchpad that fully specializes on NFT offerings and on IGOs, initial gaming offerings. We're going to take a look at this, see if this is a good investment opportunity, see if this is a scam or the opposite and give you guys as much value as possible in the next 30 minutes. So you definitely going to want to stay tuned for this one. All right, you guys, my name is Rick here at the Digits Club. We're going to get started right away. Thank you guys so much for joining me again. I really do appreciate it. And everyone who always watches these videos, just welcome. And I hope you are having a fantastic day. Make sure to grab a notepad and some coffee so you sit nice and comfortably while you soak up all of this information. Make sure that you note that I am not a financial advisor. So always make your own judgments at the end of these videos before actually investing. All right, let's get into this because you guys must be very, very busy and you want the most value out of your time. So Game starter, let's see if this is an investment opportunity you would like to get into. Now, with every IGO launchpad, I like to point out before I start that the gaming industry is bigger than the movie and music industry combined. It is also one of the quickest growing industries out there. Even if you are an investor that doesn't like to play games in the first place, you're not interested in going and, and actually playing these games yourself it is still an incredibly good investment opportunity right again you don't actually have to go and play these these are initial gaming offerings it's all about investments as long as there are people playing these projects then they will get big right so if you're an investor then it's all good all right so we're looking at this website. The homepage looks really good and we're going to go over the homepage real quick and then we're going to dive into all of the specifics. What we can see right away is that uh, they have already uh, have some uh, IGOs upcoming, which is very important here in the beer market. It is difficult to find launch pads that have current projects going on or even uh, projects uh, listed. So this is very, very good to see. I'm seeing some familiar names here. We have drivers and uh, GB dinos. So uh, I also see sorts of blood here and bit rifles. They already put a lot of information out here, uh, such as their social media, such as the total race and of course the name. You can go ahead and click on either of these projects to get additional information. I for one know that Drivers is a very hyped project and I've heard a lot of people talk about it. Uh, it shows a lot of potential and it, this might definitely be a very interesting IDO. Now, what exactly this is, you guys, we're gonna get into it later. We're gonna talk about all of the specifics of the IGOs that, that they are launching. For now, we're going to go back to the homepage and look at the overall picture before zooming in on the projects. Now, over here, we will see uh, the projects that they've already done. I believe yeah, these are the next IGOs. If we go down, here are the ended IGOs. So these are the projects that already have been done. Now, these are most important because here we can see a little bit on how they have performed in the past. And that's a decent indicator for what might happen in the future. So we're seeing a 76x on Project Seed, 36x on Dark Frontiers, 21 on Bit Hotel, 12 on the Moo Monsters, 18 on Dynasty and 20 on Demol. These are some amazing returns. And I do believe that most of these projects have been done in the bull market when basically every project was booming. But nevertheless, this still is very, very promising. As it stands right now, you can, I think, click on the project. Yes, you can. And we can look at all of the specific details of the project. Now, Project Seed is, of course, the one that went a 76x or whatever. Uh, it is quite famous, actually, because it was such a just massive uh, success really and as you can see here you have much more information the basic metrics the project overview so uh igo game starter is very transparent in giving information about both their prior projects and upcoming projects which is very important good returns are of course very important as well and like i said before i am seeing some pretty well known and pretty hyped igos upcoming they have a lot of upcoming projects actually, which is interesting. So thus far, you guys, I'm bullish thus far. It's looking really good. And I've, I'm reviewing a lot of launch bets and I can tell you right away as a little secret between just us, 
there is not a lot of launchpads that have this many projects upcoming and these kinds of results. Then again, this is just the homepage. Let's uh, actually, we can load more. Uh, I think it just, yeah, it just uh, loads more prior projects. Uh, all of these also went seven sex X, so also pretty good ones. Now over here on the homepage, that's about all that they show. So we don't really have any additional information like their team, like um, you know, tokenomics or anything like that. It's not on the website, but you can participate from the homepage, which is of course very, very important. Also, you can buy your tokens from the homepage too. You can do that over here once you collected your wallet. You can do it through gate.io, Uniswap, PancakeSwap, and uh, it currently goes for $0.14. You can actually see that on the website as, uh, as well, which is very nice. Here you have all of their social media, and then four buttons, the IGOs, the INOs, the Meta and the Accelerator. Pretty cool to see that they are also actually a accelerator, uh, which is basically, as I say, we help on-chain businesses at every stage of development to scale. So that is basically just a incubator program, which is not very important if you are an investor, but if you have projects you want to launch uh, or you want uh, projects from beginning to end to be vetted and helped and basically incubated, uh, you can do that with GameStarter as they are also a accelerator. They also have Meta, uh, which is a visually and uh, specially connected games and seamless metaverse experience. So that is also very, very cool. Uh, over here is a button you can find out more. Let's actually see what they have to offer over here. Introducing the GameStarter Metaverse. GameStarter is a complete gaming ecosystem that brings a new standard for blockchain gaming by building multi-chain launchpads and an NFT marketplace. So that's right, you guys, apart from just being a launchpad and an accelerator, they will also have their own metaphors with a NFT marketplace. And over here, you can actually see some more information about the meta you know, full release that will be in quarter two, 2022. Also the early assets and IGOs in meta will be there as well. Uh, the multipurpose, metaverse, uh, fractionalized NFT ownership, gamified approach to IGOs and inbuilt game testing and environment. Very cool looking and then they just have some more and I uh, just moving over to their white paper to dive deeper into the project and see basically how they market themselves and what uh, yeah yeah what what makes them special right so over here in the overview it's not very uh, interesting to be completely honest with you they talk about what all of the things are that they do of course they are a launch platform they are an nft marketplace and they have a native token uh, specifically game starter will provide developers with advantage funding opportunities which is basically their accelerator slash incubator program and um, they will introduce new revenue streams for gamers and developers alike which uh, i suppose is um, basically just the metaverse and the igos that they uh, provide uh, the rich token-based economy uh, like most launch bits do and then provide effective marketing tools by giving developers access to explore to game starter community okay that is all pretty straightforward then here are the problems that they are trying to solve. Um, I didn't feel like a lot of them were very interesting except for the problems for NFT buyers. Buyers of NFTs should be aware that generally there is no limit on the supply. The vast majority of purchased NFTs are going to be worthless in the future, again, because there is no uh, limited supply. However, that mostly applies to visual art pieces such as digital paintings. However, being a part of an in-game ecosystem will dramatically improve the long-term value and yield of such an asset. So in their NFT marketplace, uh, they will make sure that the NFTs will hold value by not making sure by making sure that there's not an infinite amount of them. And uh, yeah, that, that is a very good. And they do seem to know their ways around NFTs, right? They're not just focused on IGOs. They know what's up with the NFT market. And I do feel like their NFT market could be a big success in the future. Now they also want to tackle expensive gas fees and uh, the problems for indie developers. Now this is of course referring to their accelerator program, helping indie developers launch their projects. Not very important for most people watching this video as they are investors, but it's good to see that they offer it. Now over to the market overview, uh, gamer popula population and global spend on constant rise. Now, of course, this is what I talked about in the introduction 
we are simply seeing a rise of global gamers. There are currently, as of 2021, so that's already a while ago, but uh, 2.73 billion gamers. Just to give you a little perspective, that is nearly half of the human population, really indicating that even if you haven't touched a game in your lifetime, you don't like gaming, this is still, for an investor's perspective, an amazing, amazing opportunity. So I don't have to explain to you guys why games are so booming and why it is such a good investment opportunity. I believe if you're watching this video, you are probably well aware of that fact already. So I wouldn't have to actually explain that to you. Now the global uh, revenue is of course growing and we can see the graph here as well, going from 397 billion all the way up to 600 billion as a growing market uh, usually does. Now, and then the, we have the competition uh, about the NFT technology, blah, 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 not very important kind of fluff. Now the business model before we move forward to the tokenomics is simply an important part. So how does the company make their money? It is important to, to know. They make their money by uh, with the fees, right? They have a marketplace and they will uh, take a fee for every transaction being done, 2% uh, for being fiat and 0.2 uh, to 0.1% if it's done with their currency and NFTs alike. So obviously that's how they make uh, most of their profit, but they will also obviously work with uh, launchpad models, meaning that they will have their own token, people will buy the token, and that will basically give them uh, much of their profits. Uh, good to know. And that is basically it for the uh, white paper. We're not seeing a tokenomics nor a team, which is very unfortunate. With some digging, however, we should be able to find it over here on coin market cap if we do a little bit of effort. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up for you guys in just a second. Uh, before we do though, let's look at their coin. It is the game coin. It's currently going for 13 cents. So it was not actually up to date on their website. Coin uh, in and of itself looks good. It has the main pattern that all launch bets have here in the beer market. Massive explosion near the beginning, stayed relatively high ever since, then basically came crashing down and has been very low ever since. So that is how it basically almost always goes. And obviously around here, this is where the bear market really kicked in. Launchpad started to take a massive hit as the market declined and thus the coin and its value went down quite a lot. Regardless though, however, the comments over here seem to be very positive. The same sentiment had been detected both in their Twitter and Discord. I couldn't find much negative press about the launchpad. So it does seem like they haven't done any sketchy stuff in particular and that the sentiment is overall relatively positive which is incredibly important, of course. Over here, I have the tokenomics for you guys. It was a little bit difficult to find. They did not put it out on their white paper nor their website, but you guys, I always do my research for you guys. So uh, there you go. Here we have it. Uh, we're seeing a 27.25% of adoption incentives, which is a very interesting. You do not see that often on the tokenomics, especially not a weird number like this. And it's a very large part of the pie. 15% uh, for the team, that is definitely just average, just like 6% for the advisors is also very average. 7.5% for development, however, is quite odd. Obviously, the developers are supposed to be a part of the team, so they are kind of supposed to be in the team metrics, most of the time, at least that is. But they have actually pulled out an additional 7.5% for developers, in my opinion, boosting the team tokenomics uh, from 15 uh, all the way up to well, well above 20% as they are simply using more of their tokens. They have just framed it differently, making their team coin collection definitely higher than average. Then we have 25% for the seed round, which is very large, 4.25% uh, for public, and then they have 15% for liquidity. Now the coin has obviously already launched, so you're not gonna be fully on time to participate in those things anymore. I, I believe uh, that those rounds are already all over the public one as well, but you will still be able to participate in the TGEs of the projects that they are launching. Uh, over here, we have a bunch of more uh, screenshots, things that were not on the website, but this seems to be pictures from a previous version of the website, meaning they have basically changed it most likely. Over here, we are seeing a non-docs team as I already expected because I couldn't find the team. Now, if you guys are watching my reviews more often, you know that I dislike undoxed teams. It will give them a much easier time getting away with murder, how I would like to frame it. They can hit and run, 
is much easier. They are not putting themselves out there. We do not know who they are. Um, their prior experiences, for all we know, could be hoax pocus, could be crap, could be non, it could be fictional, right? So uh, very uh, annoying to see that, in my opinion. But nevertheless, we do see, uh, you know, uh, some some names here at least. Uh, we see the CTO, CMO, and uh, some advisors over here. And uh, we do see someone that uh, apparently had worked for Dowmaker, uh, an advisor that has also worked for Dowmaker. So at least that is good to see. Over here, we can actually see the vesting uh, you know, pattern and the cliffs of the uh, tokens. Now, this is all pretty straightforward. Of course, the private sale will release more from the get go and uh, you know the adoption incentives and liquidity a bit less. And it all looks pretty uh, good. Uh, what is notably, notable is that the team and development won't start uh, to come up until around 15 months. So that is a very good uh, long period of holding for the team and developers is usually a good sign. It means that they uh, aren't planning on doing a uh, rug pull. But then again, this is all quite old. It already happened. Now they have a bunch more screenshots that seem to be from their old site. They have their partner stated over here, which are Dowmaker, Kairos, Shima Capital, Avalanchon, Evangelion. Uh, sorry guys, that is a difficult one to pronounce for me. So those are some good partners. Moving over here, we actually have their roadmap. It's a little bit small to read. I'll make sure to zoom it in in the actual video. So in quarter two, the 2021 was their start. They launched their token and started the website. Uh, over here, quarter four, uh, crowdfunding, automatic NFT release, and basically getting everything started. And then in quarter one of 2022, uh, the NFT marketplace, has launched the auction system integration and in quarter three to four they are going to be uh, putting a mobile app ios for android and for ios ipy for mobile games and introducing additional nft types for music videos and movies though that is good to, to see moving over towards their social media now social media obviously very important i don't have to tell you guys it's the sentiment it's the community and for a large bet that is absolutely vital so here is the page we see 135,000 followers uh, it depends where you put this launchpad in whether it's tier 2 or tier 1 uh, I, I would be hesitant to put it into tier 1 but of course it is a little bit of what you would feel yourself they have done many very successful projects they have done a lot of projects and they have a very large following yet still it would likely still be a tier 2 launchpad in my opinion at least but there would definitely be people out there that would argue it might be a tier one and always some haters that would uh, put a shit into a tier three. But I don't think it's a tier three. I mean, for Christ's sake, they're verified on Twitter, right? That has to mean something. <laughs> At any rate, yeah, so 135,000 followers. We get a big community here with lots of interaction. Uh, they post very, very often. If we click on literally any one of the tweets, we can already see a lot of uh, replies. Yeah, the, the only negative comments I'm mostly seeing are just crypto skepticisms, uh, not necessarily anything towards GameStarter. Um, most of the tweets are kind of neutral or in fact positive. Now, most of the positive sentiment have mostly come from uh, you know discord and telegram their twitter community isn't uh, the most active ones of the communities they own but still an overall good sentiment and i would also like to point out that their designs are very very pretty and they definitely appeal to me they also have a youtube and i'm very bullish on this one obviously it's not very very big they have 1.8 thousand subscribers but they got this guy and he makes amazing videos i really love watching them uh they uh, he really talks about the ideas uh, sorry the igos that they're doing here on game starter but also many other things so they're providing basically free content for their supporters talking about their own igos uh, i knows but also uh, more things other things that are very important they uh, release teasers uh, such as this one. So this is one of the IGOs that uh, had launched on, uh, I, uh, on on GameStarter. I wanted to talk about in a little bit because it looked really, really good. Uh, this is Dark Frontiers. So you know what? That's enough about the social media. As you guys can see, it's really, really good. I want to dive into their other projects, their old projects and their upcoming projects. And in particular, Dark Frontier. So let's move over to IGOs and see if we can find a Dark Frontier somewhere here, if it's still upcoming or already in finished. There we go, Dark Frontiers, it was one of their uh, biggest successes. Now, as you can see right here, it looks absolutely phenomenal. It looks amazing. 
very very pretty and i've already seen some gameplay of course this is a trailer but i can tell you right now the trailer looks exactly like the game so it is as good as you are thinking right now or at least almost as good and uh, yeah, there, there's a reason why this project went through the moon because it was a very good project. The game was amazing. The fact that the game starter hosted this project is amazing, right? The project was awesome. It raised a lot of money and it did amazingly. Everyone that had an allocation made very, very large profits. And again, you know, the, the project just looks great. And this is not the only good project that they have done, right? Project Seed, 76X, uh, Bit Hotel. It also just looks good, right? Apart from just having raised a lot of money and made, in, made like more than a 10X, they also look very good, which is so, so important. Uh, they don't have any garbage games or scams. And this is just another cool metaverse game that really focuses on a nostalgia, NFTs, social interaction, uh, communicating, etc. And it's really cool and it looks amazing. And of course the project did very well. So the project that GameStarter has launched are very good. The community sentiment is amazing. What about the tiers, right? I'm interested. How do you actually get into GameStarter if you want to? Now, it was once again quite difficult to find the information on this, but this is the most recent uh, yeah, article that I could find regarding the tier system of GameStarter. Now, a little feedback point, please just put this on the website or at least on the white paper, it has to be easy to find. At any rate, 750 game for the very first tier that will give you a allocation size of one and a 10% lottery chance. So they have obviously lottery systems. They provide an opportunity for people with less money to also participate. But in most cases, in most people watching here, lottery tiers is not something you want to go for. If you actually believe in a project, you don't want uh, it all to rely on chance. So most people rather just put a little bit more into the launch bed to have a guaranteed allocation. From guaranteed, uh, that will be 5,000 game at least. Uh, the allocation size will be two. So that's already double from the very first tier. And now if we move over to the calculator, we can see that the token is going for 0 0.13. 0 0.13 and that we will do times 5,000 for the first allocation tier. Oh, <laughs> and that would be 650 US dollars for the very first tier, which is very cheap actually. And if we move over to, let's say the first tier, so that is the very cheapest uh, lottery tier that you can get, we would have to do this times 13 again, and that would be 97 US dollars. Also very, very, very cheap. Now. We are also wanting to see the most expensive one, which is 150,000. So that is going to be quite a chunky one. Uh, that's 1,500, 15,150 times 13. There you go. So that would be, wow, look at this, almost $20,000 for the most expensive one. But then again, you will have a pool allocation size of 32 and of course a guaranteed allocation, obviously, right? So that is an amazing tier. And what I like about the tier system is that you can go all the way from less than $100 all the way to 20,000. They have a lottery tiers for people who are interested in that. They have guaranteed allocations for people who are interested in that. You have very cheap tiers, you have very uh, expensive tiers, and it is just very, very cool. So overall, I'm a big fan of the tier system. It looks great. All right, you guys, so that was basically all the information that I could give you guys on Game Starter. We looked at the, the tier system, we've looked at the, their prior and upcoming IGOs and INOs. We have looked at their social media, their sentiment, their white paper and the team. And now you guys should be fully updated on what this project does, what it's all about. And with this information, you can now make up your own mind. Will you be investing in Game Starter or have I not been able to convince you? <laughs> not that I'm trying to convince you guys, but I do feel like if I have to give my own opinion, again, I'm no financial advisor, but this is an amazing project. I love everything about them. Uh, the only, again, feedback point is that information was hard to come by. Uh, I, a lot of things were not on the website and the, the team isn't doxed. But if those are my only two flaws, then 
you know, two red flags versus a lot of green flags, it, it, it looks good, right? And sure, they can improve, but it's also quite a new launch pad. So you also do have to give this team time to develop and hopefully dox themselves in the future as well. For now, however, I'm quite bullish on them until they prove me otherwise. Uh, I personally wouldn't invest in them until they have a dox team, but when they dox, uh, consider me in because I'm actually very, very uh, positive about GameStarter. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.